Hello all my truth seekers, I'm Keisha. In this video, I will debunk the Netflix movie, Leave the World Behind. Wow, my brain is still pulsating from all of this knowledge. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. Before I dive deep into the debunking of this movie, take a look at these clips. Here are hidden messages in the movie Leave the World Behind. Spoiler alert. First is the changing artwork. As you can see behind the bed, the waters are calm and still. But as it progresses, it becomes more turbulent. As you can see here, this symbolizes that still waters will be no more in the future to come. Next is this photo, which appears to be like radio waves or signals that changes to this and then eventually looks like this, reinforcing that our signals are gonna be interrupted. Then we also have this artwork right here, which is eyes on a painting by a painter named Bartolome Togo. The same artist also had an exhibition called Craving for Humanity, where his designs speak to the upheavals of the world, such as wars, famine, and abuse of powers. Next is this scene from above, which appears to look like a power button, signifying turn the power off. Next, we have this pamphlet, which translates into death to America, and what appears to be of Islamic origin. To add to that, let's not forget that the author, Ruman Alam, is Islamic, and Mahashala Ali is also Islamic. And this was done cleverly to show who the message and warning is coming from. Lastly, I'll touch on what was seen while traveling. We see Fort Moss Road and Point Comfort, exit 76. Fort Moss was a free black settlement during slavery. This movie had a lot of references to race, which I would have to do a whole nother video for. So get in the comments if you want me to touch on that. Point Comfort was the irony of them actually leaving the city to come to the island to get out of their comfort zone and how what's to come is gonna also get them out their comfort zone. Exit 76 has to deal with the year the United States was established. The White Line, which also touches on the racial aspects of this movie, was a ship that brought the first African slaves to the colony of Virginia. We see the Huxleys, which is a reference to Aldous Huxley, the author of A Brave New World, and we also have the registration, which is 1222. Some speculate it's predicting a date. Others say it's nothing at all. I'll let you decide. I'll finish this off by explaining the ending, which most people hated. The little girl you just saw was obsessed with friends and wanted to watch the last episode called The Last One. Not to mention that Matthew Perry used to date Julia Roberts and he coincidentally passed away on her birthday. So basically his ending marks her new beginning with this movie and that is what the ending was all about the end of the world as we know it and a new one trying to survive once seen it can't be unseen and in the land of the blind the one-eyed man is king the netflix movie leave the world behind is loaded with symbolism and easter eggs to find now just a heads up this video does contain spoiler alerts so first go watch the movie then come back here now, one of the things that stands out clearly when you watch the movie is the colors blue and orange are everywhere. The movie starts out when they're in a blue bedroom, she's wearing a blue dress, they have a blue car, there's a blue tablet, everything seems to be blue. Even at the end of the movie when Rose goes to grab the Friends DVD, the Friends DVDs were blue and orange. The movie starts out with Julia Roberts and Ethan Hawke in a blue bedroom with a gigantic crack in the wall. Cracks can represent the physical manifestation of vulnerability, and cracks are often associated with fragility, highlighting the vulnerability of a system or something about to collapse. This movie was about the societal collapse. The opening credits are all black, white, and red. These colors are heavily associated with the Freemasonic Knights Templar, and the credits even end with the Illuminati Eye. And there was actually a painting filled with the Illuminati eye when they first entered the house as well. Now there are other hints of Freemasonic checkerboards throughout the whole movie. For instance, you have the boy wearing the checkered swim trunks. There's a scene where you also have the checkered... In the beginning of the movie, you have two lamps on the side of the bed. One of them is on, the other one is off. 
This could represent the two pillars in Freemasonry. The light being on, representing the sun, the light being off, representing the moon. On the way to the vacation home, they take exit 76 towards Point Comfort. In the year 1619, a ship carrying the first African slaves landed at Point Comfort. This ship was called the White Lion. In a scene later in the movie, a ship called the White Lion washes up on shore. Certain African legends describe white lions as spirit animals that come to warn us about dramatic changes on Earth, and they are thought to have protected humanity throughout time. At a point later in the movie, Ethan Hawke gets out of his car, and the station is even on 1619. Also in 1619, a Jamestown colonist, John Rolfe, used the term 20 and odd to describe the kidnapped slaves who are arriving. In a later scene, when the man's going to get the satellite phone, you see a bottle of Geist 20 and odd antifreeze. And a lot of people have pointed out the t-shirts that the boy and the girl are wearing. The girl is wearing a NASA shirt and the boy is wearing an Obey shirt. Some people are taking this as a hidden message to obey NASA or to agree with the mainstream narrative. There are also several paintings that change throughout the film. The painting in the living room starts out as seemingly four peaks and it slowly transforms into something that's indistinguishable. There's the painting of the ocean behind the bed in the bedroom. Many people have noticed that the water rises as the movie progresses. Now, when they first receive the emergency response on the television, there's a map showing all of the area of the blackout. Now, on that map, there's a QR code over the state of Kentucky. People have scanned that QR code, and where it takes them is very strange. When they scanned it, it took them to the Lake Shawnee Abandoned Amusement Park. Creepy. Now, the Lake Shawnee Abandoned Amusement Park is located in Mercer County in Kentucky. Supposedly, the park was built over ancient Native American burial grounds. Many people thought that the land was cursed because the amusement park had several lethal accidents. At the timestamp of 17 minutes and 10 seconds, the movie pans to the Friends episode, season 10, episode 17. So you have the 1710 going to the 1017. The next scene, you have Ethan Hawke playing Jenga. He's discussing his job, and he says that media serves as both an escape and a reflection. So you literally just had the reflection, 1710, timestamp of the movie, 1017, Friends episode. At one point in the movie, Julia Roberts notices some deer out in the yard. Ethan Hawke then says that's a good omen in Mesoamerican mythology. However, when you look up the deer in Mesoamerican mythology, deer are associated with sacrifice. There's a scene in the movie where you see a sign, the Huxleys. Some are speculating that this is pointing to Aldous Huxley, the author of Brave New World, the dystopian novel that talks about psychological conditioning in a dystopian nightmare. So at the end of the movie, Rose decides to leave and go do her own thing, and she breaks into a house that says Thorns. And the girl who broke into the house was named Rose. Every rose has its thorns. There's a scene where Julia Roberts slaps down cigarettes on the counter. The brand name of the cigarettes is Providence. Providence can mean to take care or prepare in advance, having foresight. Now, she got this at the store where she saw the Kevin Bacon character preparing and having foresight of what is to come, the collapse. So these are just some of the things that I found, but I feel like I've barely scratched the surface. If you found anything else that I haven't found, let me know in the comments. I know what this movie is about now, from the color, the name, leave the world behind, whereas the U.S. goes off the grid, satellites now working. All of this is based on technology. Okay, it comes on and you see the crack in the blue wall, which represents water, hence the painting of the ocean waves on the wall. This color aside from purple, that represents Aquarius as well, and gold represents Leo, hence the color that's always near the blue color. These are called their lucky colors, not their birthstone colors exactly, but lucky colors as well. When it comes on, you hear complaints about how the year was terrible and so on. But then you see the father, there's a Caucasian father, he sits down, well he doesn't sit down, he um, he picks up his coffee that was on the nightstand and it has the number six on it. 
The number six represents an angel number. Then as they drive, there's one exit for Fort Most, which was for free blacks slash Negroes. It was a settlement for free blacks and slash Negroes. But they take the exit Port Comfort that represents the first enslaved Africans arriving in Jamestown in 1619 on August 20th. Anglo-Indians kidnapped by the Portuguese, arrive in British colony of Virginia and are then brought by English colonists. The arrival of the enslaved Africans in the New World marks the beginning of two and a half centuries of slavery in North America. Oh yes. Founded at Jamestown in 1607, the Virginia colony was home to about 700 people by 1619. The first enslaved Africans to arrive in Virginia disembarked at Point Comfort in what is today known as Fort Monroe. Most of their names, as well as the exact number who remained at Point Comfort, have been lost to history, but much is known about their journey though. They were initially kidnapped by the Portuguese colony forces, who sent capture members of the native Congo and, and Dongo kingdoms on a forced march to the port of Luanda, the capital of modern day Angola. From there, they were in ordered on to a ship called San Juan Batista, which set sail for Veracruz in the colony of New Spain. As was quite common, about 150 of the 350 captives aboard the ship died during the crossing. Then, as it approached its destination, the ship was attacked by two privateers' ships, which was called, get this, the White Lion and the Treasurer. Crews from the two ships kidnapped up to 60 of the Batistas enslaved people. The White Lion docked at Virginia Colony's Point Comfort and traded some prisoners for food on August 20th, 1619. Oh yes. Oh, I'm not done yet. This movie is taking a journey from the past to the present. Heck, even the song that was playing as they arrived at the house, it's singing about being misled to go with someone and not knowing their true intentions. The past is coming back to haunt the present. Oh yes. Aquarius is about the truth. Empires are falling. Technology is arriving and the old world is behind us. Hence the age of Aquarius. The family drives up in a blue car. Nothing too fancy. But then the owners who so happen to be Negro slash black drives in a fancy new age car that was mentioned several times. The eyes in the painting as they enter the house. What well, you heard in the video, it may represent his exhibition war, famine, and abusive power. Something America has been doing toward the world for a long time, especially Negroes and Hispanics. Then as they enter the house more, Julia reveals that the Wi-Fi password is novella, meaning short or long novel or story. Oh yes. As Julia walks through the house, the painting and the pictures are abstract and represented as signals and waves, all signs of technology and water. This points to the sign of, of Aquarius as well. Then she goes to the market, which is called Point Comfort. They wanted us to see that, of course. Of course you see Kevin Bacon. I'm using their um, real names because I didn't really pay attention to their acting names and I'll be uh, addressing the kids as boy and girl, teenager, whatever, but you guys know who I'm talking about, trust me, okay? So again, of course you see Kevin Bacon packing up for some catastrophic events, water and so on. They then drive to the beach on the road resembling the power button, like a power button on something. But get this, they're driving it to the right, which means the signal for on. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, you don't believe me? Go fact check me. Then when they arrive at the beach, it's Charleston Harbor. Did you know that Charleston Harbor represents the American War? where the first shots were fired and the site of the first submarine attack in 1864. Again, there is something always about slavery when it comes to this movie. Even the name of the, the ping on the boy's phone says Sags Harbor is about the American Revolutionary War. Meanwhile, it was told that in New York, the Patriots fled from the advancing British and Loyalist forces and departed from Sack Harbor by boat and ship for Connecticut in 1777. American raiders under return Jonathan Meigs attacked 
a British garrison and fort on a hill in Sag Harbor, killing six and capturing 90 British soldiers in what was called the Meg's Raid. The fort was dismantled after the war. The site has become known as the Old Burying Ground and is associated with the Old Whalers Church. Sag Harbor became a significant port for the whaling industry and the processing and sale of this oil in the late teen 1700s. Oh yes, if you don't believe me, fact check me. And the deer that come up on their property means luck, new beginnings, and fertility. Mm -mm, how symbolic for this movie of leave the world behind. Then what do they play? Jenga, which is a game that allows you to move pieces while trying not to destroy the foundation. How symbolic again for this movie. Oh, and another symbolic thing is how the original owners of this house come home and they're treated like visitors, terrorists, and criminals. Kind of like what they do now to Negroes, Hispanics, etc. And what they've been doing for centuries, who are the people that come back to their land that they originally owned. Yeah, to someone taking it over and claiming it's their house and, you know... <laughs> Don't get me started with that because that would be a whole nother debate. Anyway, then the girl turned on the emergency um, alarm that was on the TV that so happened to be in so bright blue. And then the Jenga fell. And we know what that meant. It means towers, corporations, structures are about to fall. Then Julia wakes up to alerts about hackers and blackouts all due to technology. With the painting on the wall of the waters are reaching a whole new length and height oh yes higher than it was before let's not forget what the little girl and her obsession with friends tv series which was getting on my nerves to be honest yeah she wore a nasa shirt how convenient and her brother had on a shirt that read obey hmm interesting sheep yeah nasa and obey like sheep then you see the painting on the wall looking drastically different from the night before. This is the painting that represented signals. Meaning their signal is even more mixed and defragmentized. Then you see the deer again. We already know what that means. And then the camera pans over to the picture of a map titled the United States of Attica. You see the United States of Attica commemorates the pivotal year of 1971 the uprising by marking the genocides and murders that occurred in the united states from the colonial era noting 2260 deaths during the civil war 264 deaths in the battle of little bighorn and 45,564 lives lost during the vietnam war if you don't believe me fact check me then it's the huxley the name huxley on the house that the um that gh drove up to where members have excelled in science see this name is about members who have excelled in science medicine arts and literature the family also includes members who occupy senior position in the united kingdom too public service oh yeah thomas henry huxley from 1825 to 1895 was an English biologist known as Darwin Bulldog for his defense of Charles Darwin theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how convenient. Charles Darwin was an English naturalist, geologist, and biologist. His proposition that all species of life had descended from a common ancestor is now generally accepted and considered a fundamental scientific concept. That G.H., whose initials are convenient the same as the one of the first members of the Huxley family, George Huxley, the family he visits, okay? <laughs> He's also the grandfather of the author, this George Huxley, is also the grandfather of the author, Adoes Huxley, of the book, Brave New World, get this, and the doors of perception. How convenient. Then the white guy drove away to get a newspaper or something. He conveniently ran across a Hispanic lady pleading for help. She said, as I was able to translate, she said she'd been walking for 50 miles and needed to use a phone. She said that some planes have been spraying gas and dropping red flyers, and she needed to return home. Hmm. A Hispanic lady asking for help, and she was ignored. How symbolic again. Also, the planes falling from the sky at random is no coincidence. They are all operated by the grid. So do the Tesla cars. 
Oh, and what about the bug that stung the boy? It's almost like the bug that Bill Gates allegedly let loose over random cities that reportedly start making people sick, especially that actress who played in Death in Paradise. She plays Florence. I believe her name is Josephine Gilbert. She was put out ill because she got stung by a bug. If you don't believe me, go fact check it. Then it's the flyers that fell from the sky. Again, what the Hispanic lady was talking about, that read Death to America in, in Arabic language. Then GH tells the story of his friend being part of the evil cabal group. Did you know cabal is a word that typically applies to political intrigue involving persons of some eminence? It means a plan secretly devised to accomplish an evil or treacherous end. The evil kebab is a term used to describe a group of people who are involved in a secret society such as the Freemasons and or have set themselves up as the royals. Yeah, like the royal family. Yeah. They are under the orders of the 13 bloodline families and are also called the elites. Under them, they have their minions who run around doing what the cabals ordered. Oh, yeah. You know, like the, um, what I call them, the, the mascots and whatever. Yeah. That's what they do. Mm hmm Yeah. Or the politicians. You don't believe me? Fact check me. This movie is drenched in Freemasonry and New Age of Technology, thus the age of Aquarius, which is the beginning of the new world from the last 2,000 years. Then you see flamingos fall from the sky representing balance, beauty, and distinctive traits. This fell into the water, and we know who the water barrier is. Yes, Aquarius. And who the water sign is. Pisces. Flamingos represent the sign Virgo, the zodiac sign that is opposite of Pisces. The age that's passing away, thus leave the world behind. Oh yeah. Masonry or Masonics or Freemasons will become exposed. NASA will become exposed and there will be floods and more. Underground bunkers aren't going to help Zuckerberg or Musk. Hence the ocean painting in the master bedroom gets bigger and bigger. And the painting in the living room ended up looking like white noise at the end. Then you see them scaring off more deer and the two fathers and son ask Kevin Bacon for help. But as they drive off, you see the number 1222 on his car. The numbers 1222 represents partnership, duality, helping others, humanitarianism, altruism, and kindness. This is an important message from the universe and its guardian angels announcing certain changes or events regarding these matters. All the attributes of the new age of Aquarius opposite Leo. You don't believe me? Again, fact check me. Then GH explains the program that his colleague said scared him. This plan was a three-stage maneuver that could topple a country's government from within. The first stage is isolation disabling their communication and transportation. Make the targets as deaf, dumb, and paralyzed as possible. Setting them up for the second stage. And the next stage is synchronized chaos, terrorizing them with convert attacks, misinformation, overwhelming their defense capabilities, leaving their weapon systems vulnerable to extremists and their military. People would start turning on each other, hence the Kevin Bacon situation, without clear enemy or motive. Third, if this is done successfully, the stage happens on its own. Which is a sudden unlawful seizure of power from our government, which means civil war and the taking down of a government. Pretty much saying that they're trying to take down a U.S. government. Anyway, these are also steps of taking down elites, trafficking, government lies, and so on. Like you said, it will fall apart on its own because it was already dysfunctional and built on lies. Not necessarily a war, but the beginning of a new age, though. Then it enters the house of the Thorns, which could be the name of many English families who were pretty much political, tired, and religious strife people who left Britain for the new colonies in, new, in North America. Although the trip itself offered no relief, conditions on the ships were extremely cramped and many travelers arrived diseased, starving, and destitute. These immigrants believed the opportunities that awaited them were worth the risk. Once in the colonies, many of the families did indeed prosper and in turn made significant contributions to the culture and their descendants are running our government and the colonies of the growing colonies. An inquiry into the early roots of North America family has revealed several immigrants bearing the name Thorn. If you don't believe me, fact check me. 
And then as she proceeded to the basement to the secret room, she passed a painting that said, hope begins in the dark. You know what that means? Yeah. Then she turned the switch on the basement generator, which was next to something that read Commodus. It was a Roman emperor's name called Commodus or Commodus, depending who's saying it. His reign is commonly thought to mark the end of the golden age of peace and prosperity in the history of the Roman Empire. The golden age represents the zodiac sign Leo. The zodiac opposite of the age of Aquarius that is coming. So that means the scene in which Commodus or Commodus does name is shown proves to coming age thus the last one is the name of the friends episode the girl was obsessed with well that's it i'm exhausted emotionally exhausted literally let me know what you all think below on that note don't forget to subscribe share and like and hit that bell to get notification when i do post my videos love you all bye oh, okay. i don't do the astrology when it comes to pluto mars and all the other planets i don't do that okay i go by my intuition psychic ability and study whatever i'm not an astrologist or an astrologer i'm a flat earther so i don't believe in that galaxy that you guys talk about okay so i really appreciate your interpretation with the pluto mars lining with the the jupiter saturn and all the other stars and stuff i really really appreciate that but just i don't care <sighs> i go by intuition my visions and my gift if i'm wrong feel free to put it in the comment section when i'm wrong just want to point that out again thank you bye